everybody and welcome back to my channel. In today's video I am going to be doing a QA. and a I haven't done one of these in months and months and months and I think I want to do one every season so I'm going to say this is the summer Q&A and then I'll do one like in autumn and then one in winter just so that we're not doing too many Q&As even though I don't do too many anyway but yeah because there's only so many questions that can be asked. I asked on YouTube and I also asked on Instagram for any questions for this video and I have actually got quite a lot so hopefully this video won't be too long. Also on Instagram I did say that if you don't want your question to, like if you don't want your name to be read out with your question and then to leave a little asterisk and some people have done that so if I say somebody asked that means that that person has chosen for me to not read out what their name is. So I'm going to start off with questions from YouTube because here we are on YouTube. Amy Will Bond on YouTube asked if you could live anywhere in the world where would you live? Right so if I actually honestly answered this question it would still be in England where I currently live now because I don't want to live in a different country especially a different country where I can't speak the language but if I had to pick a different country that wasn't England I would pick New Zealand. I went there when I was 12. I am planning on getting a tattoo of a little New Zealand kiwi on this wrist. I've already got a little hippo on this one and it's going to be an outline of a kiwi on this wrist and basically I just really liked the country. In my eyes it's kind of similar to England but amplified by like 10, like it's so much nicer, the, like the nature side of things is a lot nicer there and people don't tend to litter as much and obviously you've got volcanoes, you've got thermal springs and loads of different things that's very interesting over there so I really liked it when I went there for a couple of weeks back when I was 12 so yeah I would choose to live there if I didn't live in England. Right, Ruby Roo said, how to deal with toxic siblings or living with people who make you feel unhappy? Now, this is a difficult question for me to answer because I didn't have a toxic sibling. My brother, Tommy, hello if you're watching, um, we got on quite well, like we did fall out when we were younger, but then like that's what brothers and sisters and sisters and sisters and whatever do, um, they just fall out. But if you are genuinely like in a household where you are really, really unhappy with who you're living with, especially if you're a child, that's difficult because you can't do anything about that you can't just move out on your own especially if you're a child or if you don't have money that kind of thing so I can't I personally can't really give advice with this question because I have never been in that situation and if you are a child or like a young person that can't physically move out then it is very difficult and obviously I if I was in that situation what I would do is just avoid that person as much as possible and just try not to have conflict or try not to argue or anything like that or if they are being really annoying and horrible then I would just blank them. Um, obviously you know it's easy said than done but that's just what I would do. I'm not saying that's the best thing to do but yeah it's hard for me to give advice on this question because I've not been in that experience myself. If you was in this position and you was able to move out and you could get your own place then that's what I would do but obviously I think this question is asked by somebody who is um, not old enough to move out so um, yeah. Sorry about that, can't really answer that question very well. Okay, this is a nice question. Monica the Musical said, um, I've literally watched four of your videos this morning and they were so calming. Thank you for watching. Um, and she said, my question is, you and your mom have the cutest relationship together. What do you think is the key for a good mother-daughter relationship, especially if you live apart? Mum does like being in my videos. She is often in quite a few of them and she does like to be filmed. <laughs> and um, yeah, me and mum do get along quite well. I get along with all of my family members quite well I get along with my dad really well my brother and I don't know like I suppose growing up like you obviously will have arguments with your family members over certain things probably stupid things and I think the thing is obviously I don't live with my parents anymore so when I see them like it would I haven't argued with them in years because like what is there to argue about like I haven't you know I don't live with them so I don't have anything to argue about when I go back and I suppose me and mum are kind of similar in a way like well I don't know if we are but I don't know what I'm saying and what I'm saying is that like me and mum can just chat about random things and just get along quite well and I suppose I don't like mum can also I can also see mum as a friend as well as a mum and I think that's what it is because me and mum would go for a drink sometime or go out for a meal and we're just chatting and that kind of thing and I think that's the good thing and you said what is the key for a good 
um, relationship and I suppose it's kind of like making your parents also your friends and you can have banter with them. I, me and Tommy have banter with mum and dad so much like you wouldn't even believe it like yeah <laughs> so yeah we kind of treat them like friends as well if you know what I mean so I would say that don't know if I'm making any sense. Izzy R asked two questions. First of all, she said, can we get a flat tour? Um, sorry if you've already done this. I have done a flat tour when I first moved in here, which was almost two years ago. So yes, I will do an updated flat tour very soon. I am not gonna be posting videos next week. I'm actually gonna take a week off social media, um, but I will start posting again the week after. And I'm thinking that I'm gonna start weekly vlogging. I'm gonna do one weekly vlog every single week and then a sit down kind of video like this. So I will try and include a flat tour at some point. I'm, I'm just, I, I have wanted to do one. I just wanna make sure that everywhere is like how I want it. But you know, a flat tour is what my flat is currently at. It doesn't have to be amazing. So yeah, I will film that. And she also asked, why did you stop being a body shop consultant? Now, this is a controversial question. No, this is a controversial answer. Um, right, basically, I when I started the body shop at home, I didn't really know like 100% too much about it. Um, the person that recruited me, obviously she would say like so much positive stuff. She still does it now. And she's still always, you know, posting positive things. And I came to realize that this is not a way of making money for the majority of people. For 99.9% .9 of people, this is not a way of making money and not enough money for the effort that you put in. If you do make some money, it won't be that much in comparison to how much effort you have to put in. There is obviously the select few, the odd person that does make a lot of money from it, from recruiting people and, you know, um, getting loads of people involved and obviously the more people you recruit the more money you will get because you earn commission as well on what they sell um, but the majority of people that you've recruited won't actually be making any money which is I don't like that factor I didn't want to recruit people because um, you have to buy your starter kit at the beginning and you probably won't make any money and it's a lot of effort compared to like a normal everyday job when you're actually earning like a good amount of money and yeah I just didn't want to recruit people I knew this wasn't for me and I thought if I'm putting all of this effort into selling products for a company where I just earn 25% commission then I might as well do this with my own products something that I'm passionate about and that's when I decided to start my skincare business I don't agree with multi-level marketing companies anymore and I've seen so much negativity surrounded by them and I completely agree with what everyone says. Yes, there's always gonna be that one person that says, this changed my life, I've got loads of money, you know, I can buy this car or whatever. And yeah, that's fair enough, fine, whatever. But 99% of people, that doesn't happen with and that's what we've got to remember. And yeah, it's just it's just not a way, personally, it's just not a way of making um, good money in general. And um, but I just say that if you want to start up your own business, start up your own business. There's many different things you can do. Also, people that call um, their like multi-level marketing thing their own business, it isn't their own business. Can I just put that out there? Um, in my opinion, I'm sorry if I'm offending anyone that's a body shop consultant. You can completely do you. What I'm not saying you're not successful. If you're successful, great, carry on doing it. But what I'm saying is the reason why I stopped is because I know that the majority of people aren't successful and I didn't want to become successful because I didn't want to recruit people like that. So yeah, sorry if that was a long answer, but it yeah, I was going to do a whole video on that, but I knew it would trigger quite a few people that I know because there was a lot of people that I know that was doing the body shop at home. Most of them have stopped now and that's very telling <laughs> because it's, you know, it, it's, if somebody is starting it up, stopping after a few weeks starting up again after a few months stopping it's because they're not making money if they was making loads of money they would keep doing it um iqs asked your top five face masks of all time just like you face masks are my favorite part of my skincare routine so always looking to try new ones so good question right um first of all my current favorite face mask is obviously my Fresh Face by Georgie Card Charcoal Clay Face Mask. I newly launched this on Wednesday, so um, go and check it out, links in the description if you want to. This is a great face mask, especially if you've got oily, spot prone skin. Also, I love the Body Shop Himalayan Charcoal Mask. That is a really, really good one as well. Um, it's got like little charcoal pieces in it, just like mine has. I also really like the, I really like this, um, 
I think it's a rose face mask on the body shop. Uh, it was like a gel consistency. I actually really liked that. Um, I haven't used that in ages um, because I don't have the product, but yeah, I really love that. Um, there's this face mask that's from um, Shop Miss A. It's a hyaluronic face mask. It's 70p. I get so excited to use that. It dries and sets down on your skin, but it's very nourishing and moisturizing, and I really love it. It's in my cupboard. I could go and get it, but all my lights are set up, and I'd have to, like, fly over. Um, but I've mentioned it in several videos. So, yeah, a hyaluronic face mask from Shop Miss A. That's number four. And then number five, it's definitely going to be one from the body shop. I'm just trying to think. I kind of like the coffee mask from the body shop. That's quite nice. It makes your skin nice and glowy. Um, but I don't think it's like a favourite favourite. But yeah, I can't really think of any more. There's probably one that's screaming out to me, but I just can't remember. Um, but yeah, um, I do love a good face mask. It is the favourite part of my skincare routine. So I'm glad that it's also yours. Amy Leo asked, favorite food and least favorite food um it's just screenshotted that because it's not showing up on my it's showing up in my notifications but it's not showing up on the actual video which is weird um but my favorite food is anything with pasta i love pasta it's amazing i could just eat pasta for every single meal i also really love pizza i think i like things where um like you can have different toppings and things like that like you can have different types of pasta and sauces and with pizza you can have different kind of toppings why is my hair being annoying um so yeah pasta and pizza but if i had to pick one it would be pasta if it was a sweet food i love a good jam donut I really do um then my least favorite food right i'm not a picky person i'm not picky when it comes to food whatsoever i will happily um I will happily eat pretty much anything anyone gives me, but the food that I eat that makes me go, ugh, like literally I just, I pull a face and it makes me go really uncomfortable, is sweet potato and roasted vegetables in general. I can eat any vegetable apart from sweet potato and turnips. Oh my God, sweet potato and turnips, no, no thank you. Um, don't think I like parsnips either. Parsnips, turnips and sweet potatoes are just a no-go in general. They make me go, ugh, but I will still eat them. If someone serves them to me, I will still eat them um but roasted vegetables i can eat vegetables boiled i can eat vegetables boiled but as soon as they're roasted they kind of taste like sweet and i don't like that sweetness it makes me go all funny so yeah roasted vegetables or sweet potato things like that don't like right that's all of the questions from youtube now i'm going to go over to instagram and there's quite a few on here so Anna Martins, and also she's bought a couple of things from me before, so thank you for ordering from me. I appreciate it a lot. Um, asked, is it hard to create new products or manage your small business? So in terms of product creation, the actual idea of what to come out with is not hard because I just want to come out with every single product I can think of. But actually making the product, like... For me to bring this product out, like the other day, I had to consider the ingredients, so the formula of the product. I had to practice that formula over and over again, get it wrong several times over until I get it right for me to be happy with the product. Um, testing the product, making sure that it actually is a good product i then had to consider packaging so i had to purchase um these like little packaging things i also use this for my gel moisturizer and which i've discontinued for a short while because i've run out of an ingredient um and i also use this for another um face mask that i sell on my etsy and ebay so i have to consider that i also have to design the label which is on here which takes time and effort because i want to get it right and then click order is it the right size? I need to do measurements. I need to make sure that it's right. It's waterproof. It has to be um, because I don't want people to have labels that are coming off when they're using this in bathrooms and things like that. So everything has to be considered. And then obviously the putting of the product together, I have to then consider um, an information sheet that comes with this product, which discusses the ingredients, how to use it, the benefits of the product. I'm posting on social media every day about it and the launch and how it works, etc. And I have to schedule those posts. Um, putting this on eBay, I've got to take pictures of it. I went to my parents and I spent ages taking pictures in different angles and that kind of thing. So it does take time just to get this onto Etsy and eBay, there's a lot of time and effort. So don't think you can just start off a skincare business. Like I am still learning to this day about this and how long it takes, but I love doing this and it's something I'm passionate about. If I didn't enjoy doing it, then I wouldn't do it. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, I really love doing it. And in terms of like time management, um, like that part of your question, it 
I, I'm a very organised person. I do a weekly plan every single week of what I need to do for my little skincare business. I've got a whole notebook for it. I also plan every single post I'm going to post on social media for that week. I try and post three posts a day. So that's me planning um, 15 posts a week on a Saturday or a Friday whenever I do my weekly planning. Everything is planned and organised and that's why things get done because I've written it down to do it on a specific day and just kind of spreading everything out so that I have time in the day to do everything. So yeah, it's just prioritising things but mainly organisation. Okay, Nicole, who um, I can't read her use username very well, I can't pronounce it properly but I know she's called Nicole. Um, she asked... Oh, I'm not following her. How rude. Okay, I'll request to follow. Um, she asked, what's your dream job? So my dream job, okay. Now I'm studying accounting and finance at uni. So you might think maybe I'd want to be an accountant, but I don't necessarily want to be an accountant. I just think that's a great degree to have for any kind of job. And also I'm very kind of like mathsy based. I like sort of like numbers and things like that. And also it is very helpful for doing my skincare business is understanding, you know, profits and um, that kind of thing, you know, profits and, you know, financial statements and that kind of thing. It's very good to understand all of that for a little skincare business. And I think that knowledge is great to have in general life, um, but that doesn't mean that that's what I want to do. My dream, dream, dream job um, that I would love to do would be to, carry on doing YouTube and just to get paid for my YouTube videos. Like that would be the dream job because obviously it doesn't require me, like it requires me to do something I enjoy as a hobby like I'm doing now and just to stay sat at home. But realistically, that's not gonna happen. Um, second dream job would be to earn a good amount of money from my skincare business, which again, um, would be something that may happen in the future. But again, it's just a hobby to me at the minute. Um, and then, I maybe in the future would like to own a little cafe or something like that but personally I think like for the amount of effort that would go into that I don't know if you'd reap the financial rewards um that quickly so I'm not sure about that one so I suppose I don't really care <laughs> whatever throws my way like whatever life gives me I have no plan just whatever job comes this way I will do that I like um she also asked is there another pet that you'd want in the future well Got my little hamster Stanley, which he's just nice and cute. I would love to get a little bunny rabbit. I wish that I had a, an outside area to my flat that has like grass so that I could get a little like hutch and a little run. Um, Cause I really want a bunny, I just really do. But I'm not gonna get a bunny because you need to be able to look after it properly. Like people that get pets and they can't look after them properly, like just don't get one, you know, it's just selfish. So um, I'm not gonna get one maybe when I move out into a different place or something, but I would love to have one. In the future future, I maybe like to get a little dog, but again, they take up a lot of time and effort and uh, I, don't, I don't think I'd want that anytime soon. Let's put it that way. Somebody asked, are you in a relationship? Yes, I am. I just don't choose to show it on here. Somebody also asked, what's your favourite meal? I've already talk, told you that it's basically pasta and pizza, you know, carbohydrates. Um, I do also like loads of other meals as well though. I've recently really liked this granola bowl that I have, which is like a, smooth, a smoothie bowl, not a granola bowl, a smoothie bowl, frozen fruits mixed up with a bit of banana, um, blended and then a bit of granola on top. Very nice. Okay, I can't pronounce this person's name. And um, I think Rube, oh, I don't know. I'm really sorry if I pronounced your name wrong. He asked, if you went back in time before picking A-levels, what would you change? A lot. Okay, I if I went back in time to repick my A-levels, I would not have picked maths, chemistry, and biology. Why I did that, I really don't know because they were very hard. And at the end of the day, what you need is either A-levels to do with the kind of things that you wanna do in the future, or just a good grades. And I should have picked something that I enjoyed more and I would have got a better grade in. I'm so glad I did maths, very glad I got a decent grade for maths anyway. Um, chemistry and biology, I don't think I would have done them. I think I, I would have done something interesting like sociology, if that was an option, I can't remember. Just because I would actually genuinely find that interesting. So for me, I wish I'd done that. I know some people will look down on things like that, or well, they do, don't know why, um, because at the end of the day, um, there's a lot of 
things when it comes to like the mind and how it works and that kind of thing um, and it's important to understand that but yeah I would have loved to have done that um, or I would have loved to have done um, maybe an art even though I'm not so good so I think at A level you have to be quite good um, I'm all right at art but not that good um, so maybe not that one um, but yeah I just wouldn't have picked biology and chemistry together <laughs> so yeah um i would have definitely wanted to have done sociology or something like that and my mum asked i'd love to do a video with you again for your channel maybe a q a for the both of us so let us know like in this video if you want to see a q a with both me and mum or a drive with me q a we could do like a drive with me and answer questions that kind of thing let us know um because like i said mum always wants to be in videos someone's called please stop i'm crying <laughs> oh dear um asked what's your favorite all-time body shop product now this is a tricky question because i do like a lot of body shop uh, products um the himalayan charcoal mask is a good contender that is a good product um but now i've got my mask there's no need for me to buy that one um what else do i really like to be fair i genuinely think if i had to say what my all-time favorite product is from them it would actually be that mask i'm not gonna lie so yeah Himalayan charcoal mask but bear in mind I've tried hundreds of their products so that really is the best. <laughs> Omar who I know from years and years and years ago um asked why are you such why are you such a sexy penis? This is an inside joke um we're friends it's an inside joke from years ago don't know where that came from I think I was the one that made up pumas but yeah it is a, just an inside joke from years ago and it's still going to this day um so yeah I don't know Fern, who I know from GCSEs and school, she's got some cute hamsters or she's got at least one hamster at the minute. I can't remember if she's got any more. Um, but yeah, she's really good at looking after hamsters and she gave me a lot of advice on how to look after my hamster, which is great. So, um, but anyway, she asked, how do you think of new video ideas? So I, I don't know. Like I literally sit down in front of my laptop and I will just plan out what videos I wanna do on specific dates. I always do kind of similar videos. So I'll do like my favorites video every month. I also do a lot of what I eat in a days, general daily vlogs, or um, I try and think up like a body shop video because I know that quite a lot of people subscribe to me like to see those. So I think, okay, what body shop video can I film? Is there any new products or is there any products I'm currently hating or loving, that kind of thing? Or and then any kind of like out of the box videos, which I don't really have any like out of the box videos that are just really like unique. Um, but I will just look at what other people are posting, get inspiration from that. And I'll just think, you know, what do I want to film, you know? And the, the ideas just come to me as I'm sat there. I really don't know. There's no actual like specific thing. Um, so I've answered all of the questions from there. Over on my Fresh Faced account, there was a couple of questions. Okay, I think um, this person's called Tammy. Not 100% sure, but from the username, I think they're called Tammy. Um, they have ordered some things from me before, so thank you for ordering it again. I really appreciate anyone that orders, including you. Um, but she asked a couple of questions. She said, do you, um, do you recommend using a serum? If so, which ones? And then, and then she also said, with what products would you pair it with? So basically a serum is a product that contains like a high concentration of active ingredients. So for example, um, I have a serum here which has vitamin C in it and that is an active ingredient that I have in my skincare routine because I really like glowing skin. So this vitamin C gives really nice glowy skin. This product itself is the Skin Diva um 20 percent vitamin c and e so it's got vitamin e as well which is great for softening your skin um it's in a dark packaging because vitamin c can actually like denature or like i don't know whatever just not work effectively if um it gets into contact with the sun i have recently purchased a new vitamin c serum this is the vitamin c brightening serum for glow and radiance um from balance active formula i picked this up from bnn it was like two pound 99 so i'm excited to give this a try and um, this is going to be used when i've run out of this one i just i love vitamin c it's great i'd recommend that if you like glowy skin also hyaluronic acid is another great 
like serum to have or a serum with hyaluronic acid in it because that's another great active ingredient for hydrating your skin, making your skin nice and plump, and it just makes your cells so, so, so much more hydrated and therefore overall your skin is nice and soft and plump and nice. So yeah, these two in combination are great. You can also get things like vitamin E serums, which is like skin softening. Also vitamin A's. Um, an example of one of those is retinol, which is great for people that are a little bit older that want to prevent wrinkles, reduce wrinkles and fine lines and things like that. So that's an ingredient that I will be um, using in serums when I'm a little bit older. So it depends what age you are. Research what serums are great for people in their 20s, what serums are great for people in their 30s or 40s, and then, you know, 50s, 60s, 70s, etc. So at the minute, I would recommend if you like hydrated kind of soft skin, vitamin C, hyaluronic acid, and if you really like soft skin, vitamin E, but that's not um, something I've got. You don't need tons and tons of serums, just focus on what you're really looking for. You know, you don't need one of everything. I just have these two in my routine because that's what I am looking for in my skin is to have glowy, plump looking skin. Okay, I think that is all of the questions that I have now answered. So I need to remove that off my story before I get any more questions. Um, so yeah, this is a super long video. Thank you so much for everybody that asked a question and for anybody that watched this video. I really appreciate it and I hope that you have a really good day. I am gonna be taking a week off social media next week, but I will be back, I think, the Monday after for a weekly vlog. My first ever weekly vlog, I think, on this channel. Not sure, possibly. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching and I will see you then. Bye.